I think this is quite a good question. It involves lots of different skills and it's got a really interesting range question for part C. So pause the video if you want to have a go at the question and I'll go for the answer now. Okay, so for this question here, we're given this figure and we're told this is a sketch of the curve C with equation y is equal to f of x, where f of x is equal to 4x squared minus 2 e to the power of minus 2x. So for part A, for three marks, we need to show that f dash of x is equal to this here. So we need to differentiate f of x and to differentiate this here, we're going to use the product rule. So if you remember the product rule, the product rule, if we say that f of x is equal to uv, f dash of x is equal to u dv over dx plus v and then du over dx like this here. So we're going to call one of the functions here u and the other one v. It doesn't matter which way around it is. For this particular one here, we have this 4 at the front. I'm going to ignore this for now and just multiply everything by it at the end. But if you want to, you can include it in one of your functions. So what I'm going to say, I'm going to say that this x squared minus 2, I'm going to say that this is u and this e to the power of minus 2x, I'm going to say that this is v. Okay, so u is equal to x squared minus 2 and v is equal to e to the power of minus 2x. So if we differentiate both of these, du over dx is going to be equal to, so if we differentiate x squared, it's 2x and then minus 2 is just a constant. When you differentiate a constant, it just goes away. And then dv over dx is equal to, so this minus 2 is going to come down as a coefficient, so it's going to be minus 2 e to the power of minus 2x like this here, okay? So therefore, f dash of x, as I said before, I took the 4 out at the start, so I'm going to multiply everything by this 4 here, and then it's going to be, if we use this formula here, it's going to be u, which is the x squared minus 2, multiplied by dv over dx, which is this minus 2e to the power of minus 2x, and then this is plus v, which is e to the power of minus 2x, and this is multiplied by du over dx, which is 2x, like this, remember, all of this is multiplied by this 4 at the front, okay? So what we're going to do here, let's quickly expand all of this here, so this is going to be equal to, so let's leave the 4 at the front for now, so if we do this, so here we have this x squared multiplied by this minus 2 e to the power of minus 2x and this is going to be minus 2x squared e to the power of minus 2x and then we have minus 2 multiplied by this minus 2 e to the power of minus 2x which is going to be plus 4 e to the power of minus 2x like this here and then we have this e to the power of minus 2x multiplied by 2x which is going to be 2x e to the power of of minus 2x like this here and all of this is multiplied by the 4. Okay so if we look at what we want for the final answer we want this 8 factorized out of the front here. Now here we have a 4 at the moment so if we factorize 2 out of this here so this 4 will become an 8 so therefore this is going to be 8 and then if we factorize 2 out from this function here so this is going to become minus x squared e to the power of minus 2x plus 2e to the power of minus 2x, and then plus xe to the power of minus 2x. If you look at the final answer again, we want this e to the power of minus 2x factorized out as well. So we're going to say this is 8e to the power of minus 2x, and this is going to be, so now this is going to be this here, it's just going to be minus x squared, and then this here, if we factorize out e to the power of minus 2x, this is just going to be 2, and then this here is just going to be x. And this here is the final answer. They've written it in a slightly different order. They've written it as 8, and then they've done the 2 first, and then plus x, and then minus x squared. Um, and then for some reason, they've written the e to the power of minus 2x on the end here like this. I don't know why they've done it like that. But this is the final answer. 
OK, and then for part B, we need to find in its simplest form the exact coordinates of the stationary points of C for free marks. OK, so remember, stationary points exist when f dash of x is equal to 0. And in part A, we found that f dash of x is equal to this here. So what we can say is that this 8, 2 plus x minus x squared e to the power of minus 2x, we can say that this is equal to 0 and we can rearrange in order to find the x coordinates. OK, so to solve for x, so firstly we have this e to the power of minus 2x. e to the power of minus 2x cannot be equal to 0 because anything to the power of something cannot be equal to 0. So therefore we can divide everything in this equation by it because there's no risk of dividing by 0. So this is going to be 8 2 plus x minus x squared is equal to 0. And then we divide both sides by 8. So we get 2 plus x minus x squared is equal to 0. Let's multiply everything here by minus 1. So it becomes a bit simpler to do this quadratic. So this is going to be, if we write the x squared first, it's going to be x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to 0. And this is a bit more of a familiar quadratic for us. And if we solve this, we can just easily factorize this to x minus 2 x plus 1 like this here and this is equal to 0 so therefore x is equal to 2 and x is equal to minus 1 so these are the two x coordinates so now we need to find the y coordinates so let's start with the x is equal to 2 and what we're going to do is we're going to sub this into the original equation for f of x here in order to find y so if we do this so it's going to be f of 2 because x is equal to 2 and this is going to be equal to 4 and then it's x squared so it's now going to be 2 squared minus 2 and then it's e to the power of minus 2x so this is going to be minus 2 times 2 like this here okay so if you put this here this 4 2 squared minus 2 into your calculator or just figure it out this is equal to 8 and then it's going to be e to the power of minus 2 times 2 which is minus 4 like this here and then this is the exact value I'd prefer to write this personally as 8 over e to the power of 4. As you remember what this minus power means, it means the denominator. So therefore the coordinates of one of the stationary points, x is equal to 2 and y is equal to this 8 over e to the power of 4, like this here. Okay, so now if we focus on the x is equal to minus 1, so f of minus 1 is going to be equal to, so it's going to be 4, and then it's going to be x squared, so it's going to be minus 1 squared, and then minus 2, and then e to the power of minus 2x, so it's going to be minus 2 times minus 1. Okay, so if you figure this out here, so all of this, if you figure it out, is equal to minus 4, and they've got e to the power of minus 2 times minus 1, so this is going to be e to the power of 2 like this here. So this is the y coordinate. So therefore, the other stationary point, x is equal to minus 1, and y is equal to minus 4 e to the power of 2. So we have two stationary points, this one here and this one here. OK, so the question goes on and it says the function g and the function h are defined by g of x is equal to 2 f of x, where x is all real numbers, and h of x is equal to 2 f of x minus 3, where x is bigger than or equal to 0. And for the first part of c, we need to find the range of g. OK, so we know that g of x is equal to 2 f of x, so we just need to find the range of f of x and then multiply this by 2. Now, you might be thinking that you might need to to figure it out using this equation here and you won't be able to do this. The way that you can figure it out is because in figure 2 here they have given us a sketch of the curve with the equation f of x like this here and we can figure out the range using this here. So if we start with the maximum we can see that there is kind of no maximum because this line here will keep going up to infinity. So there is no maximum range for what f of x can be. There is a minimum though and it's this turning point here okay so how do we find this minimum value that f of x can be well in part b we figured out that there are two stationary points which are 2 and 8 over e to the power of 4 and minus 1 minus 4 
e squared and we can see that this here is going to be a stationary point here and we can see that it's going to be this stationary point here because we can see that this is um, a negative x value and it's a negative y value so this here is the smallest value that f of x can be so therefore the range of f of x f of x is just bigger than this y value here which is minus 4 e squared like this here. It can also be equal to this value as well because x can be equal to minus 1. So f of x is bigger than or equal to minus 4 e squared. This is the range and g of x is equal to 2 f of x. So if you multiply everything by 2 here, so it's going to be 2 f of x is bigger than or equal to and this is going to be minus 8 e squared like this here. So therefore g x, the range of it has to be bigger than or equal to minus 8 e squared. Again, there's no maximum value because this line keeps going up forever. Okay, and then for the second part of C, we need to find the range of H. Now, be careful with this question. I wouldn't be surprised when this paper was sat, a lot of students were caught out by this question because you might be tempted to do the same method that we did in the first part of C, where so we found that f of x is bigger than or equal to minus 4 e squared. So therefore, as h of x is equal to 2 f of x minus 3, you might be tempted to just multiply this by 2 and then minus 3, and this will be the range of h of x. This isn't the answer. And the reason is because of this domain here where x is bigger than or equal to zero. What this means is so x is bigger than or equal to zero. So we're only interested in this side of the graph here. This side of the graph for h of x is irrelevant. And you can see now that the range is going to be completely different because this, remember up here, this is going up to infinity. We no longer have this and we no longer have this stationary point here. So we're going to have a new range and a new minimum and a maximum. So what is this going to be? Okay, so the minimum you can see on the graph is going to be this point here and this is the y-intercept this is the lowest that y is and the maximum is this point here and this you can see is a stationary point because the gradient is zero okay so let's first find the minimum so remember this minimum is a y-intercept because it's intercepting with the y-axis. So this means that x is going to be equal to zero. And what we can just do is we can sub x is equal to zero into this equation here in order to find the y-coordinate here. So this is going to be f of zero is equal to four, and then x squared, so it's going to be zero squared minus two, and then e to the power of minus two x minus two zero, like this here. So if you put this into your calculator, this is equal to minus eight. So this here is the y-intercept, and this here is the minimum minus eight, okay? This maximum is a stationary point. Now, we already talked about one of the stationary points, which is this one here, but the other stationary point that we found in part B is 2 and then 8 over e to the power of 4. And this here is going to be this stationary point here because this is the other stationary point. And this has this y coordinate here of 8 over e to the power of 4. So this is going to be the maximum. So therefore, when x is bigger than or equal to 0, f of x so its minimum value is going to be this here and this is where it's minus 8 it can also be equal to this um, value here because we're told the domain x can also be equal to 0 so it can also be equal to minus 8 and then the maximum value is going to be this y coordinate here for the stationary point which is the 8 over e to the power of 4. So this is the range of f of x when x is bigger than or equal to 0. Okay, so when x is bigger than or equal to 0, this is the range of f of x. Now h of x is equal to 2 f of x minus 3. So in order to get the range of h of x, let's first multiply everything in this inequality here by 2. So this is now going to be 2 f of x like this here. This is going to be bigger than or equal to, and then minus 8 times 2 is minus 16. And this is going to be less than or equal to, and then this is now going to be 16 
over e to the power of 4 like this here and then we have this minus 3 here so if we minus 3 from everything so this is going to be 2f of x minus 3 and then on this side here this is now going to be minus 19 and then on this side here it's going to be 16 over e to the power of 4 minus 3 so therefore the range of h of x it's bigger than or equal to minus 19 but it's less than or equal to 16 over e to the power of 4 minus 3 and this here is the final answer.